season, the very start of it, where he'd got taste of his first victory. However, he was actually younger than Samuel Pupo is today. He'd already experienced a couple of years on tour, got his first victory at 20 years of age at Snapper Rocks. And it was uh, with Pupo blood. Uh, Samuel Pupo had uh, his older brother, Miguel, make finals day uh, at Snapper that year. It was an incredible showing where he finished in the semifinals. And now we're going to enjoy a 35-minute clash. The Pupo family upstairs, Mateus Hurdy sticking around to cheer on both competitors, but he's really good friends with Sammy there. It's going to be a fun matchup, and the energy has been real. Ever since we got here this morning with all Brazilians in the quarterfinals, the best to definitely deserve to be in this heat today. It is really cool, and it, it's not an atmosphere we're definitely used to, or, or you know, this is something that is new. It's like uh, with having that many Brazilians here, there's every single person is able to cheer for their favorite surfer, right? And uh, that has been on point since the day, or since the first tutor this morning. Uh, finals day has been awesome. The, the waves came here to the party as well, and I expect fireworks in this uh, final, and I, I really don't. I mean, as much as we, you touch on Felipe's winning percentage here in these finals, you would have to say he's the, the favorite. But, man, Sammy has been surfing so well, and here he is. Samuel Pupo with nothing to lose and a lot to gain. We'll go down on the first turn, but meanwhile, we'll catch up to a huge rotation for Felipe. And he's incomplete. So fireworks from the water, explosions from the sand with cheers from this amazing crowd. And things will get started with some incomplete numbers. Felipe has been in this situation before. He has been able to play into this crowd and these huge roars coming from the sands. Sammy, on the other hand, this is going to be the biggest moment of his career, a final in the championship tour. He's been dreaming of it. As we watch this replay here, going on this right, we've seen him complete errors all week long on this right. And one little misstep there, and he goes down on the first exchange. I mean, he stomps out, the crowd erupts, and uh, Sammy would hear that. But now it's kind of quiet, you know? And so even Steven still. As we saw the first turn go down for Sammy, that's how he started his heat against Italo earlier this morning. And then he switched into gear and then got two back-to-back -back keepers, which helped him defeat the 2019 world champ. Felipe looking for a 12th championship tour win as he's spinning around quickly on the right. Wave number two for Felipe. Up and out for the man in yellow. Up in the Red Bull athlete zone, watching Sammy prepare for his heat. Him and his brother having a quiet moment. The Pupo family all upstairs. The kids running around, and those two were just sitting side by side, very quiet, having a moment, talking his things through. Uh, a lot of talking coming from Miguel, a lot of listening coming out of from Sammy. So let's see if those words of wisdom are going to help him here. Oh, he's had so many mentors and it's just his family to, to look up to. And Miguel, significantly older than Samuel Pupo. He's learned a lot from his big brother and his father to become who he is on tour these days. Traveling up and down the coast in Brazil together, going to great events to build this big reputation that he's brought to the rookie class this season and succeeding against all odds and waves that he hadn't spent time in. We mentioned the quarterfinal start at Pipeline. But what a feeling if he can accomplish his first win of his career in his rookie season. And I think one of the things that we've talked about is Miguel Pupo having one of the best seasons he's ever had. And it's a lot, I think, due to the fact that his younger brother is there joining him. And they're able to feed off the energy together. Um, and, you know, and an older brother always, like, trying to show by doing the do, right? And uh, Miguel has had a great season. And now Sammy just following right there in the, the storm with him um, in this first final of his career. Sammy Pupo. Always likes to thank Munir El Hajj, a, a great photographer that traveled with the family up and down the coast. Sammy made the move to Marcias, that wave famous for, for Gabriel Medina, knowing that name's always attached to the three time world champ. But he was able to surf there. There's other waves within reach, Kamburi, which is a little bit south from where he grew up. Just takes an ATV with one of those little four wheelers on the sand. He can hunt down sandbars. How cool is that? Pretty awesome way to go surfing every day. It is. Toledo 137. Incomplete on a big full rotation. Sammy Pupo 0.63. Looking at the waves we have for the final. 
Are you predicting an air show throughout <laughs> this entire heat? I hope so. I mean, uh, looking at these conditions, I wouldn't say they're like super conducive to big airs, um, but ultimately these two are aerialists that have done it in all types of conditions. So easily uh, could be attainable for them to go in the lip. But I mean, they, they're so well-rounded. And I think that Felipe's progression on this tour has he's become one of the best on the face, let alone his aerial antics. Sammy, on the other hand, also really good on the face. I mean, uh, we saw it in uh, his round three heat where he was able to put a nine up with a big air and also an eight with his turn. So he is capable and he's not one dimensional. And I think on this tour, you have to be multi-dimensional. And both these surfers, again, like they, what I said earlier in the start of this heat, these are the two guys that carry the best speed uh, in all the different conditions we've had this week. Um, and here they are, you know, they were able to pull, you know, rabbits out of the hat when needed. Uh, they were able to get through heats. They served positive. And now a final on finals day in front of a huge crowd is it's just uh, exactly what they've been dreaming of. As he's looking for three in a row, Felipe Toledo with wins. He had a win back in 2015 in Brazil. But he's been enjoying this move up to Sakurama. And it's amazing how reliable Felipe's been throughout his career. When you think about 11 wins going for 12, I mean, Medina's got 16 wins with those three world titles. You know, he has more wins than John John. John has two world titles. So he's been right there every single year as a world title contender. There's no really years off for Felipe, as he always puts 100% into trying to accomplish that dream. Already clinched uh, WSL Finals 5. So he'll be competing at the Rip Curl WSL Finals in Trestles. That is already done, and there's still this heat here, plus two more events. Uh, Sammy Pupo, you know, an outside chance, I guess, if he were to win the next three, you know, hey, could be right there, right? It's a good point, Pete. 10,000 points for a win with Jay Bay offering 10, then you've got another 10,000 in Tahiti. A lot of things can change, but this is also solid for Felipe. He wants to not just clinch, which he has done, but he wants to be the number one seed. Now he's getting some room over Jack Robinson, world number two, who was upset early in this contest. Yeah, ninth place is, I mean, and again, there's no throwaway results. So each heat, I mean, you think about it, losing in that round, you know, he's got three heat wins over the top of him, right? So that means that that's how many heats ahead he is. Uh, already probably one heat ahead as it was. So um, yeah, growing that lead. Beautiful A-frame peaks, Felipe inside. Sammy's gonna have to go under that one as well. Dreamy conditions, definitely the best we've had weather-wise with the sun coming out on finals day. Clean offshore winds greeted us first thing in the morning. And we already had the semi-final set, so it's been a very quick finals day. Carissa Moore just got her first win of the season in multiple finals. And even though Felipe has had a win earlier this year at Bells, it, it kind of feels similar because he's been in a lot of finals waiting for a second win of 2022 going down in two close finals to Griffin Colapinto this year, Portugal and El Salvador. And then also remembering what happened at G-Land with Jack Robinson. Talk about consistency. So many finals this year for Felipe. And just uh, the ocean, you know, providing you for his competitors just in that one last moment. Otherwise, he could, you know, already have three wins and be running away with it. As we have a maybe a possibility setting up. Red is Sammy Pupo. Yellow is Felipe. Pupo, the rookie's got a big wall. Clean snap. Driving hard off the bottom. Big throw tail reversing complete. And we'll find out what happened on the split with Toledo. Hard to know, right? I mean, because there's cheering happening for everyone, but <laughs> I guess that's a sign. A little bit of a, a claim and definitely the crew happy about what just happened. So Toledo on the back of the Red Bull ski. Looks like he's fired up. We saw Sammy go down on the second turn, and Felipe rode away. This is what happened on the split. Wow, look at this direction. He's setting it up. One big move, and oh my goodness, that was crazy. Are you kidding me? Oh boy. Massive, massive amplitude, loft, time in the air. That was incredible. Unbelievable backside punt from Felipe. It had the height, it was a big section, and he was able, able to ride away from a whitewater section that was just looking to take him down. An absolute magician. And he hasn't been using a lot of these in road to this final, saving it 
that's exactly it. For the most saving important it. heat of the contest. Yeah, saving it. I mean, he's had to, you know, occasionally he's had to pull something out to get a score, and you know, and uh, but that was that was going for it. It was one section, one big set wave, and look at the scores coming in. A 10-point ride for Felipe Toledo. Famous for throwing tens in finals. He's done this before in Brazil as he's looking for his fourth event title in his country. The crowd is firing him up. One of the biggest, most incredible airs we've had this season. As he is going to put all kinds of pressure on the young rookie, Sammy Pupo, who's been loving it, channeling the crowd, but they're all backing Felipe now. Sammy up and out. Well, if Sammy didn't have the cuffs off, he definitely doesn't now. He can go do anything he wants. Uh, he's got to go big, obviously. You know, when you hear that, that score go down, you're like, okay, I'm behind. Um, you got to go at least excellent for sure. But a lot of time on that clock. Felipe Toledo adding another 10 to his career. 10s at Jay Bay on road to victory, the famous double alley-oop wave. Threw down a 10-point ride at Bahada Tijuca against B. Derbage. We talk about him being a great closer where he wins finals more often than not, but he often brings a 10 as well to these heats. One more look here, Pete. Uh, just look at the timing where he uses that ramp. It's a solid overhead wave and just perfectly placed. Technique, impeccable, no grab. Board stayed right stuck to his feet. Looked like the whole time he was going to make that. Incredible. It really, truly is incredible. I don't know how he does it. And with that white water being so difficult, he had so much control. It didn't take him too long to ride out a 10 point ride. And when all judges throw a 10, you call that a perfect 10. Easy call there from the panel upstairs. Pinga just having to enjoy that moment with Marcio Zuvi, the sharp eye shaper. Oh, They're just gleaming. having a blast in this final note. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Incredible stuff. I mean, he's worked really hard developing those equipment that's underneath his feet. And really, he's actually changed the tour. Uh, you think about it now, all of a sudden, there is a lot of sharp eyes. Crowd enjoying Strider Wazulewski with him during this final. It's incredible down here. The vibe is just out of control. The guys are doing the wave right now for us because they wanted to show their appreciation for this whole thing and what's going down. Let me tell you right now, this is just bananas what we're watching go down here. Toledo and that backside three is one of the freshest things we've seen. We saw him do it out here a few years ago. Now he's back to his old antics. He's got the entire crowd behind him. I can't wait to see him do it again. They went nuts down here. Let's hear it again for, e to uh, for Toledo. Special day here in Sakurema as the crowd is just maxing out here at Itauna Beach. And they came at the right time. Felipe Toledo throwing down a 10 and he's up again. Heading that same direction. Backhand float, big vert with an absolute hammer to follow. Toledo shutting this heat down. Wow. Beating Sammy at his own game, going now to turns and just electric. So quick in transition, uh, just perfectly timed and placed. Man, this guy surfs good. Now 13 10 point rides in his young career. Still just 27 years of age. One more look here, Pete. Well, again, that projection floater will push them in perfect position for that. Just beautiful hook. And then again, more vertical, again, variety. Shuts it down clean. Three solid moves, and he knows it. That's going to be another great number. Just watch the technique here. Again, the float compresses and jumps off the lip, carries that speed into the section there, straight off the bottom, right in the most vertical section, just hooks it, throws water off the rail, right back into the bottom turn. Again, vertical, more vertical on that one, getting the twist of the fins out the back. And then just a nice, clean finish and another excellent number. Felipe Toledo is feeling it in this final. A 10-point ride in the air and 8.67 to turns on that running left. He was pressing so hard off that tail. He had variety. What a feeling he must be having through his veins when he can make no mistakes. He's got the crowd behind him, turning in an excellent heat already. And he, 
Still has over 20 minutes <laughs> to go in this final as we dive into the deep stats powered by Hydro Flask for our world number one. Now 14 10 point rides. Career event wins at 11 going for a 12th victory here in Brazil it would be his fourth if he does accomplish that. And the winning percentage over 60 percent since qualifying for the tour back in 2013. Every season comes back looking fresher changes his equipment. You know it's not always stuck on the same kind of board so it always kind of brings us a new little look a new little spice getting better and better at all the venues we have. As we see Toledo's wife Ananda beautiful singer. She even has songs that she's released about Felipe you can find that online. Uh, so supportive there for all of his kids that are growing up quickly on tour. Talks about being a young father with big dreams traveling with them to certain locations. The hard work of being on the road without him came to tears when he celebrated his birthday without them on finals day at Bells when he took that trophy. But given us a lot of entertainment this season and he's been doing it in different ways. He had some cool free surfs in Margaret River with Taj Burrow. He's enjoying his time. He's a true veteran of the tour. Well that's the thing you talk about trying to you know beat your opponent in the water. How do you do that. Felipe has a way of making you quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you know you, you just all of a sudden you're like well, what am I going to be able to do you know and you're shut down the pressure is just immense and uh, he is just relaxed at this point. I mean you're sitting on a an 18.67 two wave total one of the highest of the event if not the highest. Well and just another 10 point ride they always talk about you know you don't want to peak too early but <laughs> Felipe embraces that better than most. Kelly was a genius at that through his domination of his career. But it'll give you a taste of what he's made of and then go all out when it comes to a final. What a crazy 10 point ride. Now we have a couple 10s we've had in the air this year Griffin's 10 in Portugal. Felipe's 10 right in front of our face a few minutes ago here in the final. There's barrels. Those the Belly had the 10 earlier. Yeah that's right in the barrel. But yeah focusing on errors. I mean for guys that have that ability to just max the score line out of one single move. That's those are errors you're going to remember for a long time. I mean all the young aspiring men and women who are trying to make it to this championship tour uh, do everything you can to learn the art of uh, aerial surfing. It is a necessity. And the reason why it's such a, a, a useful tool is that you don't need a perfect wave. Um, you can use an onshore wave to get yourself some amplitude. You can use offshore waves obviously like we see right now. Um, yeah so it's a weapon that you can utilize at any point in a heat um, just to close out with a ramp and uh, you can put yourself with a 10 point ride. Still 17 to go in this final. Sammy Pupo wants to get involved and give himself a shot. He's got to at least be shooting for something in the mid eights to nine point range. So he's got to go all out here. Sammy Pupo clear for takeoff. Big flyaway punt. As he's swinging for the fences now. 1650 to go. Well again strategy wise that's what you have to do. But at the same time you almost feel like you're having to do too much and go too high and too much spin and this is what it felt like right here misses the grab just going all the speed which is exactly what he needed to do but didn't get the pop that he would have liked and the board just escapes from him no grab yeah go for the double spin why not show us something we have not ever seen so Sammy Pupo just trying to break this big combination that he has on top of him in the first half of this final and looking for his very first championship tour victory. So really showing the depth of the rookie class. It was all about the Callum Robson story joining Felipe at Bells to make a CT final. And now Sammy Pupo entering a true battle for the rookie of the year race in 2022. We had touched on the depth of the rookie field coming into this season. And we expected to see um, some great surfing and you know maybe a final maybe a win we didn't know but ultimately there was enough talent there that we could see it and we have definitely seen it throughout you know Jackson Baker uh, you know this kid Sammy Pupo and of course Callum. 
What a great rookie class that we're enjoying with Sammy Pupo representing here in the final. He still has 15 and a half to break here at the Oi Rio Pro presented by Corona and Felipe Toledo turning in a super heat performance. 10 point ride in the air, 867 on backhand turns, going faster than anybody's gone today on finals day. And during the break, he just did this, Pete. Watch this, folks. You know what? He's good in the barrel as well. He finds the first really true barrel, disappears from view. Don't know where this is going to go in the scale of things. It's going to be a great number, but look at his skill. Barrels and airs, turns, he can do it all. That was incredible once again. It doesn't feel like he can be beat today. But we've seen Stranger Things, so stay tuned. And the crowd enjoying every bit of that. The Toledo camp upstairs losing their mind in the best possible way. Toledo's last score for the barrel to reverse a 7-3-3. He'll throw that one away. And I don't even think he'll mind. He just got it tubed <laughs> before Pete, you're predicting it was going to come down to barrels, airs, and like, what? Felipe's putting on a show. Oh, uh, that's great. He's like, wait, what? Huh? Questions being asked. 7-3-3 for a, a beautiful tube ride. Um, we've seen that right. Have the ability to get tubed, but in, when things are going your way, uh, the waves come to you. It sure feels that way for Felipe. That was, uh, again, a credible wave. Thinking about going three in a row at one venue, you think of Carissa Moore at Bells when she was winning in 2013, 14, and 15. A pretty amazing hot streak when you completely own a venue on tour. And with this much talent um, on the tour, it's very difficult to do. You know, um, this is beach break, so it's like you're going to get a variety of conditions. Ituna, you're going to go to Barinha, it's going to be a, a right wedge. I mean, it's not like you can go here and know the wave. Um, you know, it's a, it's a straight up beach break, and the sand's going to change, and it's not going to be the same wave every time. So to come here and win it back to back to back is truly incredible. It's very difficult to do. You know, you go to places like Tahiti where you become a specialist at a place like that. That's something you can see happening over and over and over again. Um, Bell, same thing, you know, you can start to see that happening because it's kind of a tricky wave to read the best waves, to find the best waves in a set. So uh, truly talent. Um, and you'd expect a world title at some point, and maybe this is easier. So Carissa, the most recent to go three in a row. And then before that, on the men's side, Kelly Slater won three in a row at Cloud Break in restaurants over in Fiji, 2012, 13, and 14. Complete domination. You think about backside two riding and the evolution of that, and he was at the forefront of it, Kelly, just in regards to how to pace through a barrel and, and you know pick up speed. Everyone else kind of followed suit after that. You know the Irons brothers, uh, John, John, and you know those wins didn't come as easily for Kelly, but those first few years he was the best in the world at that backhand two riding. Plus, obviously doing multiple maneuvers, but I the best waves, you know, and uh, being able to make those decisions, those split second decisions to get yourself in you know, in the spot for those best waves. So now 10 minutes on the clock. So pretty special to go three in a row. So Kelly instead, 2008, there was a little break and then went back to back 2011 and 12 to keep that hot streak. And it's kind of more similar to Toledo having a few years in between that 2019 win here in Sakurama. As Miguel staying calm, the big brother of Sammy Pupo trying to will his brother to get back into this heat. Miguel was actually the first person to kind of let me in on a lot of similarities that he sees in his younger brother to Felipe. And cool that they're matched up in this same final. All we want now is to Sammy just to get involved here, land one big air that could make a difference in his comeback in this final. Let's hope so, get him, you know, at least an opportunity, but uh, now. 25 minutes have already gone by. We're into the nine minute mark. So it's going to have to be something happening pretty quickly. He does have priority, which is a positive sign. Just needs the ocean to give him some canvas. Felipe Toledo has only had a, couple, a few events this year where he wasn't in the final. From pipe to sunset, kind of slowed down his role this season. As he wants to make a move here under priority, glassy left-hander, world number one, rips into the open face. Hard off the bottom, vertical hammer. And he'll go down hard. 
But you know how much he's enjoying this final. Wonder what his adrenaline feels like. You think uh, how many events he might win if he could put all these fans on an airplane <laughs> to go to each and every event on tour, Pete. <laughs> You'd have to charter a few jets. Watch that again, the backside hook. Just so much acceleration there again, trying to utilize that biggest section he had on that wave to punch the fins through the back. I mean, he's trying to better an 8.67, so you got to go extra big. And now down to the eight minute mark. Chris Samore taking out a huge victory over Joanne DeFay, and it came down to her final wave where she turned into 9 5 to get her first event win of the season in a lot of multiple finals that she appeared in. But yeah, just Toledo slower start in the Hawaiian leg of the tour. It looked incredible at sunset. Yeah, he sure did. I was surprised that he went down so early. I think it came down to wave selection against Ethan Ewing that day. Then oh. bounced back into one of his pet events, making the final in Portugal. Wave selection at Sunset Beach is, you know, it's difficult, uh, you know, on a perfect day, let alone trying to, you know, do it on uh, multiple days through an event. You know, sometimes you click in, you're, you're right in the spot, but it's again, it's a very big playing field. So dialing that in could be a bit of a challenge, especially if you're coming from somewhere overseas. You're not there and surfing that place, you know, over and over and over again throughout a season. And he did. He looked incredible. You know, it feels to me like Felipe's just his equipment is just dialed in, you know, for, for his style of surfing. Uh, Marcio has been able to just give him the arrows that have uh, produced multiple massive scores throughout the season. Yeah, that new prototype model that he's been enjoying this year brought him to a win at Bells. He's, it's not the same surfboard that he rode at Bells, but the same model. He's not afraid to try different stuff, right? I mean, uh, it would be very difficult to move away from equipment that works. You know, it works in all sorts types of ways, but I mean, you're always trying to make stuff better. As we check out the final recap, one of the best airs we've seen this year, a lofty backside rotation where he's inverted upside down. That board was facing the beach, just going straight upside down, lands it in the white water to get a perfect 10. Every single fan on the beach were throwing 10 fingers back to the panel. Sammy Pupo has been trying to get involved. Snap to start, fell on the second move here. This was the split peak where Felipe got the 10 going left. Yeah, and uh, you would have been pretty bummed that he had that opportunity and not to pull that one off. And then Felipe to back up the 10 just went nuts on this left. Just a clinic of backhand surfing. And I think that's what makes him so hard to beat at a place like Trestles is you've got a peak there. So he can do it both backhand and forehand, no worries. The aerials are there but on both of them. The turns are there on both left and right. And how's this wedge for Samuel Pupo? First turn, he'll get stuck. And the struggle continues for the rookie to get a completion in this final. 5.15 to go. That's the importance of putting a huge number against your competitor early in a final is that you all of a sudden now apply a, an extreme amount of pressure and it's tough to dig yourself out of that that moment because you know you need a big number and so you push that extra hard and mistakes happen you pull the trigger on waves you maybe didn't think we were uh, you know should have it's interesting with felipe's wins in brazil first time he's had an all brazilian final out here i remember when b Durbich came in finishing runner up back in 2015 he saw me on the podium. He's like, what were my scores? I couldn't hear. It was just so loud. Every every explosion of 10 point rides from Toledo. And he's like, did, did I get some decent numbers? I'm like, oh, yeah, he had a couple sevens. You know, he had a, some decent waves, yeah, but he, he, knew he, he had no idea. Well. He was trying to hear the situation, but the crowd just took over in Felipe's favor. Again, uh, that's the thing about a crowd that can, um, you know, affect the outcome of events if you can't hear anything um, you know and also demoralize you when you you uh, hear booze maybe um, there was a few booze today I, I heard and they're not shy it's re pretty rare to hear booze and surfing but it does happen it just brings that stadium atmosphere like you find sure. in sport watching different types of sporting professions and you get the opinion of the crowd this one will definitely go down in history. Record-breaking number of Brazilians in the final series, an all-Brazilian final, and 
Felipe is looking like he's about to take over all the record books when it comes to competing at CTs in his home country. Three and a half away from clinching his fourth as Sammy Pupo is trying to change things up here. And he's not catching up to that wave. Seen a lot of waves today where people have paddled and had to work hard to get into them. So there's a little bit of that deceptive look that you think, oh, this is the one. You start paddling for it, and all of a sudden it just backs off slightly. I mean, even Carissa's 9.5, she had to work to get into it. Rolling in now again, Sammy Pupo looking to land something big up and out, still searching his seventh look at a wave in this final. You can see how much it means to him to be on tour to represent Brazil. He was touching his shoulder where the Brazilian flag sits on his jersey. Really connected with all these people on the beach. Thousands of them showing up this morning. Where do they park, Joe? I do not know. There's no <laughs> obvious spot for that. I think there's public that, transportation <laughs> that's happening, right? They're coming in and they're walking in. They're there's walking in. There's a lot in. of hiking going on. Yeah, no, I'm not afraid to. to Put the shoes on and uh, go for a nice little mile hike because there isn't a whole lot of parking opportunities anywhere. And like, you know, unlike stadiums, it's just really first come, first serve. I'm yeah. finding a good piece of sand. Totally free to come down here to watch. So some of them have been around for a while, got down here on dark. And they've been planted on the sand ever since. Two minutes to go. Here comes Sammy Pupo. Big snap, he'll control that one. Second nice. move, nice and powerful and loose. His best score so far of the final, about to get locked in with a minute 45 to go. Well, in order to get himself out of combo, it needs to be above an 8.68. Great surfing, don't know that it's gonna go that high. You know, smaller way, but these two snaps, beautiful. Just a Christmas tree of water, twice out the back, nice and loose. You know, that's what he's capable of. And I think we'll see him in some more finals in his career. And it won't be long till you see him in the, as a champion. But look at that technique again. That aggression in the lip and the speed he carries. You know, you do something, a big turn like that, a lot of times your speed drops off, but not for Sammy Pupo or even Felipe Toledo for that matter. Scores come in for Sammy Pupo. It's an excellent score, but not enough to break the combination. An eight point ride for two aggressive backside hacks, but he's still comboed with 50 seconds to go. That will feel pretty good though. You know, I mean, he didn't want to finish with a three point total. Uh, he wanted to show what he's capable of in this final and he's full aware and we are all full aware that he is capable. You know, that was a smaller wave and he surfed that wave up for its potential. Brilliant turns. Packing the power in, tail sides with so much control. Everything you'd want out of a backside hack. Kind of similar too to what Felipe can do on a left. Felipe's left to turns, eight, six, seven, slightly better. Keeps Sammy in check. And it's about to be checkmate. Felipe Toledo, an absolute superstar. And quite possibly the greatest ever. Here in Brazil, as we shut this one down, Sammy gets a ride in. Felipe Toledo, your champion of the Oi Rio Pro, presented by Corona for the fourth time in his career. So cool, man. You know, what a guy, too. He's such a, a supporter of all of his peers, of his family. And these moments are, you know, in your career, they feel really good, especially right now. And the way he did it, Oh man, that was fun. Toledo peaking when it matters the most in the final. Getting another perfect 10. He's done this more than once in finals around the world. The victory lap letting out so much emotion, maybe more than we've seen from him in a very long time. Save your voice, Felipe. We need to hear from you. <laughs> As he's had now, two championship tour victories this season. Both of the wins over rookies on tour from Callum and Bells and now Sammy Pupo right here in Brazil. Uh, again, the win is, is so much better than even second because it's extra couple thousand points. So that number one seed is just getting closer and closer as we 
finish out this season and it is so important to have that number one seed heading into the final five and the WSL finals. Congratulations Felipe that was an incredible performance and so fun to watch. I'm already looking forward to J Bay. 100% a place that he's dominated more than once in the past. The most consistent surfer on tour surfing in more finals than anybody. Finally accomplishing his second win of the season. We felt it multiple times this year. He would have two wins by now. Losing by some close decisions and still keeping his eye on the prize. A 10 and an 8.67 as he creates history again. Always so supportive of the youngsters that are coming up from Brazil as well. Good friends. Great experience for Sammy Pupo. You know, getting all the way to his first final in his rookie year, serving against Felipe. He'll learn from this in a big way. What a great learning moment for Pupo to believe in himself, to know that he can get as far into a contest. He wants to be in that top 10 picture with his big brother, Miguel Pupo. Fans are going to get soaking wet. <laughs> They're going to start swimming. Felipe is going to be greeted by everybody on the beach. Oh, look at their heading through. 